Hey, hey, it's July 4th, what you know. What Sick the hell am the I sun. doing here? What are we doing here? I can't believe we're at work on this July 4th. This is so 4th. nuts. This is insane. Imagine we had a little barbecue in the corner here. I could just uh, be flipping hot dogs. If we could really do July 4th here in the studio and really do it the way we're supposed to, maybe I would do it. No. Oh. You it's would. a perfect room, no windows, no sunlight. Right, I can be hid, I can do all the things I want to do in yeah. life, and nobody can see <sighs> yeah, me. That's exactly <laughs> right. All right, welcome to the podcast, everyone. Sims and Lefko Faithful, hope you guys enjoyed Monday's episode. Uh, Wednesday, July 4th, hope you guys are enjoying your time off. Happy birthday, America. Yes, we are doing a special mailbag. Fendrick has notes all over the place, hundreds of responses, and they got weird, huh? Super weird. Like, Super so hard. weird. So weird that we might not be able to use some of them. Well, That's he said nice. they were asking, they want to know my porn habits. That was that was interesting. Yeah. We're not going to get there today because we don't want to give Josh, the mother hen, too many heart too attacks. Too many stressors yeah. uh, right. heading into this holiday week. But well done by you organizing this. Thank you. You look really handsome in the in big off-season t-shirt. Whoa. Big, Big off season. season. I'm going to cut the sleeves off this tonight. This is going to be my new podcast t shirt. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do some curls or so some triceps. So, we're actually going to involve Big Phil. Yeah, we're getting Phil in 10 minutes, and he's okay. going to be part of this. We're just going to ask him questions. Yep. Uh, you want me to explain how this is going to go? Please. Sure. Okay, so in front of it's you your guys. Show, pal. Yeah, you have uh, two sheets of paper in front of you that has the eight categories that the questions have been organized into. We've got real football questions, ridiculous football questions, personal questions, legs and ass. Pot questions, very popular topic this time. Yep. <laughs> Self scouting, animals, and big fill. Mm. So those are our eight categories. And the ways it's going to go, we're going to start with Lefko. He's going to tell me what category he wants a question Ooh. from. We'll go down the list. We'll do it. You pick I'm, the next category. I, you're, you're amazing, man. Back and forth. I don't even know what uh, to Lefko, say. This was Lefko's suggestion. No, it doesn't we really matter about the suggestion. It's it's the fact that you have nine other jobs in don't this worry company. About it. and It's you quite all right. Look when you utilize the Google Docs. Hand deflecting. You put them in the Google like, Docs the higher, and it all works The higher ups might be listening. I'm just going to deflect and act my time wisely. I swear. I did this on my free time. Google does it for you. Okay. So uh, I think we get started here, right? I want to yeah. start with a personal question. Personal question. Okay. Yeah, let's dig in deep, Sims. All Who right. you really are? What's your real name? Here we go. <laughs> so the first personal question here, at Depone44. Ooh, uh, I know I think him. this was on Instagram. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers and Odell Beckham are coming into BR for a podcast. If all three of you complete one of four tasks, no repeats, which task do you each pick? Number one, full body wax, excluding head. All right, so that's definitely Josh. Well, hold or on. no, that might hold be on. Sims. Hold okay, on. sorry, 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 sorry. Because the end of the question is important here. Okay. Fendrick, Sims, Lefko is the order. So I get to go first. You pick last. Oh. So number L- one. Lapone, you asshole. Full body wax. <laughs> number two, one three-minute UFC round versus Tony Baselli. Number three, <laughs> no weed or alcohol for one year. And number four, grow a mustache for the entire NFL season. So that's full body wax. Wow. Tony Baselli, UFC. No weed or alcohol for a year. Mustache for the entire NFL season. All right, so what are you going? You have first so pick. So I'm going to go grow a mustache for the entire NFL season. Number one, I don't really grow facial hair all that well, so by the end of the season it might actually look good. And uh, number two, I've been looking for an excuse to grow a mustache, so getting Odell Beckham or Aaron Rodgers on the podcast, I would gladly grow a mustache for the I'm whole season. I'm screwed here. So, Sims, you're up next. Full body wax. Tony Baselli. Or weed or alcohol, none of it for a year. Well, I, I mean, there's no way I'm picking no weed for a year, so right. I can tell you that. So that's off the board. <laughs> it's off the books. Uh, you lost me there. So the okay, so then it becomes between weed and I mean wax and Vaselli. Okay, uh, I mean, hey, listen, we I'm, we got to be near him in the Super Bowl. <laughs> we, He's we a did. big guy. I don't like hair as is. So I will wax myself, no problem. I'm you don't a, have a lot of hair. I don't have a lot of hair. I mean, I would rather not wax my whole body, but I will do it for the sake of not getting my so ass So in beat. essence, this is coming down to how much of a degenerate I am or do I want to fight for my life <laughs> against Tony Just take I'm the ass beating from Tony Take the ass beating by Because right. then I'll have a year of alcohol and weed. The to, weed to and get alcohol will yeah. take away the pain in the exactly. next 364. Not only like that, I'll have all the weed and alcohol, then I'll fight him. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you won't even feel it. And the good news is, Aaron Rodgers and Odell Beckham are coming on the podcast. Totally so worth it. That's awesome. I like that. That was a good Those combination. Those are number two. Sims, doable. pick a category. You're up next. Good oh, job. Paul. Okay. Um, whoo. All right. Well, I mean, as we're gonna, we we're gonna go personal. Let's go with the pot question. Let's let's go there. Let's go oh, off the surprise, wheels. Surprise! Yeah. Surprise! <laughs> All right, here we go. So, go so there man. was a lot of questions. Yeah, there were, asking oh, about. he's breathing our heavy. <laughs> there already. were there were a lot of these. Uh, first of all, so I'll just get this one out of the way. At Demus Harrison, did Sims end up blowing down with Ice Cube? The answer to that is no. Didn't no, happen. No, did not happen. Next question here. At Rod Simba, 
Ooh, indica hey, or sativa, and if you could name your own strain, what would it be called? Ooh. Now, your own strain. So I will say that this was a, I believe this was a conversation with Florio, correct? And right. you had to explain that to what this was to Mike Florio on exactly. Pro Football Talk. I'm a sativa guy all the way. They call Head me high. Chris Sativa Sims on the <laughs> Pro Football Talk now, apparently. Uh, but I am the same. Uh, yes, I am a sativa guy. Indicas, and what does that mean, Chris? Well, yep, sativas, of course, are more of your social daytime yes. highs, right? Or just you want to go out and be able to conversate. Indica is the one that's going to put you on the couch and you're be like, oh, I'm not doing anything. I never want that. Where's the next bag of chips? Every now and then I do. If I know, like, I'm, like, seriously not going to get off the couch. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I wish I, your dad was here for this conversation. Uh, well, <laughs> we, could, we could actually get him in these. He, 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 that would actually be funny to hear him assess me as he watches me smoke weed, too. <laughs> um, but, Just like a tape breakdown. <laughs> right, so name uh, your own strength. Oh, uh, the Blonde Bomber? No, see, I think yours should be sp- Spleen buster. Spleen you know what buster. I mean? Like sometimes you get a strand and it's like it's either really aggressive or kind of cute. Right. And I think you should go spleen, the spleen buster. buster. Yeah, mine would be the left coaster. <laughs> the Rod, left ride the left coaster. Uh, that's a good one. I think I like mine would too. probably be Survivor Boy. Survivor uh, Boy. All right, left like go. That. Pick your next category here. Uh, let's go. Let's go. You know what? Self scouting. Right. Let, mm. let the fans tell us where we are wrong. So we got we got some really good uh, some self, some really good self scouting questions. So first guess. one here. Let me guess. We're too hard on the Falcons. Uh, no, none okay. of that. All right. So D Chavo thirty two. Hey Lefko, I've been listening to a long uh, to the podcast a long time and really love your show. Oh, thanks, I do man. have a question, however, on some self scouting. When you guys talk about players not knowing about other players when voting on the top 100, how can you expect players to vote on other players into the Hall of Fame instead of the writers? Mm. Keeping my fingers crossed for a golden ticket to the draft party. Mm. Very good question. I'll answer it first because okay. I'll just throw yeah, this please, out there. Please. This is the thing. Hall, so when I say players to vote for the Hall of Fame, I don't want the players that are playing now. Of course, some of them, they never even saw Brian Dawkins play or yeah. some of those guys. So they're not going to be able to even know. So my big thing is the players, I would love to see players and uh, the ex-Hall of Famers. There's some sort of form of committee of people that we could just know who could be, that we know have really followed the sport is basically what I'm saying. The top 100, again, it's basically you come into the locker room and maybe 10, 15 guys are handed a sheet and they're like, write down your top 20 players. And some guy is like going into a meeting. He's like, hold on, let me finish my top 20. He writes it down. And the other issue with that is there, yes, like like I've said here before, you know, guys in a locker room in the NFL, like I said, you know, there's a good percentage of guys that go home and they don't really pay attention to anything football. They just show up the next day and they're ready to do their job of football where, okay, if that's 53 guys on a team, I'm going to say like 15 to 20 are like that. And then the other 30 are paying attention to football, certainly. But there's like out of those other 30, let's just say 20 are just on a topical level. Like I turned on the Monday night football game. I didn't watch every play, but I basically saw the major points. And then you have your 10 or 15 guys on a team that are like, they know everything that's going on in the league. They're reading everything. They've watched everything. So I guess that's long story short. Yes, it's hard. But yeah, you'd have to find that right group of I think ex-coaches and ex-players to go, no, these are the qual- the Phil Sims of the world, the Dan Fouts of the world, guys that maybe not, or, you know, Dan Fouts is in the Hall of Fame, but those are the Rich Gannon. You've been paying attention to football, yeah. you know, for a long time. I think, that it, should be, I think it should be a, an assorted committee. Yeah. Like, there are some media members that are very qualified. Exactly, they like, are Like, Peter too. King should be on it right. until he passes away. You're right. Let's be real. A hundred percent. I also think that NFL players should be involved. I think there should be a test. I think that you should ask these guys history questions. Yeah, Prove right. your knowledge. Yeah, like who's currently in the Hall of Fame? And there's like a list of 10. Because if you don't know that a guy's in the Hall of Fame, then I don't think you should be voting on the Hall of Fame. I think that when you vote, there should be so much preparation that I think you need to come in there with knowledge. This is the Hall of Fame. We are immortalizing people forever. Top 100, it's a it's a marketing ploy from the NFL Network to get you to watch when the season's not going on. Hall of Fame, I need testing, I need I need logistics, I, and I want media and players combined. Really, just let Sims and Left go do the deciding votes. Yeah, and we'll then just, everyone else we'll just do leave. it here. That's yeah. what I uh, D. Chavo, thanks for the question. That was a good question, though. Nick, let's get Big Phil on the phone. Okay. That, that, was, a, that got, was a good question, though. You want to do a quick one while he's got on the Ooh, phone? You want to do a yeah, quick one? All right, yeah, pick one, Lefko. No, it's uh, my turn to pick. Oh, it's yeah, your it pick. Real football. Real football. Okay. We'll get uh, real for a minute. Let's see here. All right, here we go. 
uh, Glow Money Glow Bands on Instagram. Glow money, if you could glow bring band. back one player into the NFL currently, who would it be? Someone like Mike Vick with a Kyle or a McVay, a physical freak Ooh. like Bo Jackson, uh, Deion Sanders in the social media era. One player bring back to the NFL. Yeah, it's one of those names right there. It's Bo Jackson for me. Um, and we'll, hey, what's hey, up, Phil, big guy? Phil, hold on one second. We're having a real conversation. Actually, Phil, oh, we're going to ask you the question, We're going to ask too. him after this. My Mine just... Think of some all-time greats, that, but mine would be Bo Jackson because I don't think we ever got to see the real full potential of Bo Jackson. Just think about this for two seconds, first of all. The guy went from being like one of the best players in baseball and then didn't do training camp or anything and then would come to the NFL and be one of the best running backs in football within like the third week of him playing. So we never even got to see Bo Jackson at his best. And I, I would argue that he goes in the conversation for one of the greatest athletes in the history of the planet. He would be a guy that I would say there. Just ask the question for Big so Phil So if here. I had to pick one NFL player from the it, past. Let me read it to Big Phil yeah. before you give your answer. Big yep. Phil, it's your arch nemesis Josh here. Uh, looking forward to our ping pong match coming up sometime this summer. Okay. Uh, so it's the mailbag <laughs> episode of the podcast here, taking questions from the fans. And uh, Glow Money Glow Bands on Instagram wants to know, if you could bring back one player into the NFL currently, who would it be? And the example he gave was someone like Michael Vick with a Kyle Shanahan or Sean McVay. Lefko, you're up. Big Phil, we're coming to you next. I'm going to go Big Phil Sims. I would love to see Phil Sims in today's NFL with five-yard cushions and a coach that doesn't treat him like shit. That's what I would like to see. <laughs> Phil, Phil Sims with a Kyle Shanahan, he'd be like, oh, you're just, oh, just going to throw that really wide open again? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I can like do that. that. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely would like to throw some of those screen passes, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, throw a bubble pass. Boy, he's accurate. UBR Phil, is really off the charts. Why well, I love him. Okay, so that's good. Good. Do you Phil, want me to answer you, that? Yeah. Who, who do you, yeah. Who do you think? Who was like a guy from the past that you'd go? I'd oh, love to man, see him there, today. Let's see. There's so many. You know, you that Bo Jackson thing. Listen, the Bo Jackson thirty for thirty yeah. was one of the best I've ever seen. And you know, I heard all about his college exploits and playing in baseball. And I go, well, that's all bull. They're just building it up to make his price in the NFL better. And then when I saw the thirty for thirty, I went. And, of course, I got to see him in the pros, but I went, oh, my gosh. He was – if he could have separated both, he would be in the Baseball Hall of Fame and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Yeah. Mm. If he could have – you know, that wear and tear, if you notice his last year, I thought in football, when he got hurt, he was losing speed. Oh, because, you did. You know, the body just never had time to recover. Right. But who would I – you know, I got one, the first one that comes off the top of my head – is Terry Bradshaw. Huh. You know, what would Terry Bradshaw do in today's game where you could move a little, throw the ball, what we know now, and, you know, we'd, we'd have to change that throwing motion. You know you got to change it. You know why? Because I read a thing once. He says, I just go to training camp every year, and I just kept fooling with the football and this and that and figure out a way to grip it and just figure out a different way to throw it. <laughs> and just... That was his thing. That's It'd amazing. take a while, but I'd get it. Right. And but because size, speed, strength, all those things, man. I mean, he would. Yeah. I can't even compare him to anybody that comes out the draft that we go all go crazy. You know, I guess you'd say Michael Vick, except he's just bigger and stronger than Michael Vick. Right. The three names that just came to my mind. I would love to see how Jim Brown did in this era. Mm-hmm. I would Ooh. love to see what Barry Sanders would do in any era. Yeah. And yeah. the last one would be. Randall Cunningham with some freaking coaching. Yeah. I would love to know what Randall could have done. That's a good yeah. point. I think Randall Cunningham just was unfortunately but ahead of his time. Yes. And what else? He was just on a had a head coach that was all about defense and that's didn't right. give a damn. That's right. That's right. You know, it, it's that's, that's enough. Right. Uh, let, uh, let's just cut practice short. That's enough offense. We don't need to do the rest of those plays. Come on. I've told some of them those stories. I know it's it's unbelievable. Do you want to have yeah. Phil choose a category? Ooh. Uh Sure. All right, so Phil, well, why don't you read Phil the We categories. have specific Phil questions. We do have some okay, Phil questions. Okay, then do the Phil questions. Yeah, let's, Phil let's go questions. with a big Phil question yes. here. So, Phil, basically. This is your podcast. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, go I'm get sorry. out of here. I'm sorry. All right, Phil. So, we had uh, some of the listeners submitted questions specifically for you. So, oh boy. Uh, we're going to go with one from Hayden Hall 8 on Instagram if you want to DM him, Phil. Uh, Hayden Hall 8. I've been a Giants fan my whole life, but I was born in 1996, so I never got to see the greatest quarterback in Giants history. Whose game most resembles his in the current NFL? Ooh. 
Which game what? Which, Which whose who's player's game you think is, like in the NFL right now, you think is closest to your game? Oh, boy. Man, that's Gosh. hard to come up with. I know. I, I probably need your expertise or Adams to do it. Carson Wentz. Oh, God, no. I couldn't run like Carson Wentz. Okay, you're both small school guys that were taken out of nowhere, that went in the first round. You could run, you could run pretty damn good early on in your career. Well, yeah. you know, listen. If you put me in today's world, if I grew up knowing mm. what these kids get to go through growing up now, then, of course, I would have been a different player. Yeah. Uh, but I would say in today's world – I think I you think, have Philip Rivers' attitude playing football ooh, to a degree. I like that. Well, I like that, yeah. I mean, you know, I think I hated more than he did. <laughs> 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 you know, I just – it wasn't – it wasn't it, – it was amazing. I just loved – winning certain against certain teams and I've told y'all this walking across the field shaking the other quarterback's hand and it took everything I had to not go how'd you like that <laughs> huh? how'd you like it was that good? Like it? but um I'd say Kirk Cousins okay you know and you know I say that nerd and and like it a lot just because I You're think rich? Kirk Cousins physically is just so much better than everybody gives him credit for yeah so there you go yeah, I like okay, that. I can see that one. Modest. I think you throw he throws it better than Kirk Cousins does, though. I'll say that. Maybe well, Kirk's, Kirk, Kirk Kirk's smarter. Kirk Cousins has gotten but... better and better as a thrower. Now, again, yes. here's the other thing, like I told you guys. Right. I didn't know anything about throwing, and Christopher and my son, Matt, I've told you this, Adam and Josh, hey, they used to sit and watch tapes of me and laugh. They'd go, look. <laughs> I mean, just because it was so not structured. You know, I'd backpedal. I would run one way, Take run another. We steps, could do whatever we right, want. Nobody right. cared. Just complete the pass. Right. That's all that mattered. So, and 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 my son knows this more than anybody. Knowing what I do about throwing now, and I've said this many times. When I was 55, for about 15 or 20 throws, I told y'all this. I could throw it harder than I could in my prime. Right. Because I knew how to. Right. But now, you know, after 15 throws. You die. You know, out. I have to go home and get a drink, get rid of the pain. <laughs> but that's 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 something else. So you know, that's times change. And man, these players coming out now, I'm just jealous of. Hell, I'm jealous about everything. All right, <laughs> one more one more question from the, uh, right, the Big Phil more. category here at Jake GP13. When did Big Phil know Chris was going to be a good quarterback? Hmm. At what point in Chris's career did you know you had an NFL caliber son? You want me to just give you a. The real truth, or well, the real okay. truth? We yeah. want the real truth. Oh, geez, I don't know. When he was four, maybe five. That Probably young? Only five at latest, but I knew at four. I knew when he was three, four years old. I just went, oh man, you know, I got brothers and sisters and and all that stuff, and I've been around. And I said he could hit a baseball, he could throw it, he could run, and he. I looked at him, you know. Because <laughs> I learned this from my father, <laughs> you know. And Christopher, you guys laugh about it all the time. I go, damn, he's got big hands, he's got long legs. Yeah, hell. <laughs> as my dad said, as I told you, as he met my wife. Oh, how you doing? And that was about the end of the conversation. He walked <laughs> away. He goes, she's gonna raise you some big, strong boys. All right, so let's get on to some business. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, honestly, I swear to you, I really thought he would be a professional athlete when he was four or five years old. Last question here, and then we'll go back to the normal categories. At View Me Cases, Chris Sims versus Old Fucker in arm wrestling, current day, who wins? Ooh. Uh, Before you guys answer, Lefko, yes. do you want to give your, your opinion on this one? All right, so Phil has a lot of arm depth. You know, it's like he's got a thick shoulder. He's got a thick elbow. Yes. Um, just, I also – He just I, looked at my elbow. He was yeah, like, I did. <laughs> I'm also thinking that Phil – there's there's two things factoring in. One, Phil's a showman. Okay? Yes. So that could be a, a deficit because I know Chris is going to be very motivated. No one wants to lose to their dad in anything. But two, Phil is crafty. And I feel like Phil is going to know an arm angle or something. I could, I could, I wouldn't put it past Phil. A little leg pinch yeah. of Chris right beforehand. <laughs> um, but I think I'm going to go with the old man strength of Phil. Wow. Hey, look, I would agree with you <laughs> up until about six months ago. Yeah. And, oh. and Christopher was here over a few days, and he knows he'd whoop my ass in a heartbeat. But you, pu you pushed him around. 
Well, he's, well you know, I just, he's, he's I got, got some, some injuries, right? Okay, I got some issues. Yeah. So I could not arm wrestling him, but I think back to when I was in college, you know, how stupid we are. Yeah. And I won my fraternity's arm wrestling contest. Right. And because I did, and you I were in a some, fraternity as a college basketball football? A couple D linemen. Yeah. And it's more than state football players, though. They're not Texas football players. Different <laughs> arm wrestling category there. <laughs> wait, 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 man. Uh, what are you I'm, kidding me? I'm joking. More at state, man. <laughs> Shoot. We were some pissed off son of a gun down yeah. there, boy. Well, you saw Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers. I wasn't well, one that's of that true, too. Yeah, we didn't have Casey. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I used to talk crap to the defensive linemen I played against sometimes. I go, what are you going to do? I'll whip your ass if you you keep talking to me like that. So, yeah, I don't think I would have done that in the Big 12, just like you said. But I, I agree, Dad. You, you, you to take he, I, Like I said, I tell people all the time in the Greenwich Eastern Equinox, he's right. Now, when, when Dad and I go work out, like we worked out a year ago, we're yeah. going to do the exercises he's best at, you right? You said this, right. yeah. But – I don't really care. He is 60, okay? Uh, he's plus 60. And, yes, it would be embarrassing. Like I'd, I'd be like, damn, Dad's doing 105s for sets of eight. What the? Like, I'd be have to talk to myself, be like, okay, here we go. Let's just grab the hundred so we don't get embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's pretty unbelievable. Well, we're taking just, Chris. No, we're taking Phil. I can only do so many Phil exercises. Phil took you. So whatever, no, Phil you know. was taking himself. In arm wrestling? Yes. No, he said about he no, said he said, We did it right now. Oh, right now. Yes, right yeah. now. I mean, yes. I'm oh, yeah, he's going to whip my ass. And, you know, but back then, all my back, pride, yes. all that ain't going to do anything, Adam. I'm going down. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Lefko. Uh, <laughs> your pick, Phil, like, blows dust in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> You're picking the next he category, Lefko. He did whip my ass yeah. in backgammon yesterday. All right, so, Phil, should I pick real football, ridiculous football, personal, legs and ass, marijuana, self-scale? <laughs> Scouting animals or Big Phil? Which one should oh I pick? Oh my God! That's our categories today. Yeah. Okay, wait. Okay, I gotta All hear them right, again. Fifth, uh, you don't need to. No, I'm no, pick no. Legs no. Here we go. Real. Just give me one. I, I don't, okay. don't want to yeah. talk We're doing about legs marijuana. And ass. Okay. Phil okay. here's. No, you don't do marijuana. No, nah, no marijuana. <laughs> okay, legs and ass. All right, here we go. So legs and ass. Uh, this question is from at Peck N V T I O N. I don't even know how you say that. Would you rather have Saquon Barkley's legs and ass Ooh. or? LaRon Landry's arms and traps. Ooh. Saquon Barkley's legs and ass or LaRon, uh, LaRon Landry's arms and traps. I'm going legs and ass. Yeah, I'm going legs. Me yeah. too. Me too. Yeah. I mean, hey, LaRon's going to get a lot of girls at the club yes. and look real good in tight T-shirts and going to be awesome. But it's not like Saquon's hurting uh, in that department. And legs and ass are going to get you a lot more money than, than chest and <laughs> curls. There you go. <laughs> That's true. All right, let's Man, do... I'm going to tell you, there ain't nothing. Oh, my God. I just want – I'd like to have that feeling just to take off and run again. Oh, my gosh. That's a great. You know, I didn't realize how great it was to be able to go and work out and sprint and all those things. And now that you can't do any of it, you go, boy, I wish I could do it now. But so, yeah. okay. But there yeah. we go. All right. Let's, let's do one more question from that category here. Uh, Logan H underscore 80. You're about to get in a fight, and you have to choose one quarterback as your backup. Who are you choosing? Mm. One Ooh, quarterback, quarterback. quarterback. Oh, my God. That's, that's pretty easy. You gonna we talking about in our prime? No, or are we talking current, about right now? Current talking about right now. Oh, no, because in our prime, and I'd take Tim Kelly because, you know, he just yeah. wanted the action. He wouldn't even care <laughs> if he got his ass beat, you know. <laughs> Tim, you know. Hey, he, listen, the Kelly brothers, I used to see him. I go, oh, my God, if you punch them right in the face, you will break your hand. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. were a rough, tough They're, group, huh? Oh, my God, are they rough and tough. Oh, man. One quarterback in today's game. Oh, my gosh. If you got into a fight. It's hard to not take number one in Carolina. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if Cam Newton's a fighter, though. Yeah, is he a fighter, though? Yeah, that's a big question, you know. I mean, I'd, yeah, he is imposing. I doubt if Carson Wentz, who's very imposing. Carson Wentz is a big he dude. Is. He I is. I mean, man, he is raw, too. Like, you know, like, he's one of those guys, if he gets your hands on you, your butt's going to the ground. And then when you're going to want to go to the ground, you're going to get whooped. I think I got mine. I know I mean, who I'm. I'm going with Phillip Rivers. Really? No, 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 no. He's no. got kids. No, hell, I could. Now, I'd arm wrestle him right now and take him down in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no way. You know, Phillip, I love Phillip. I love his attitude. Oh, Phil, I just love him. You know, All right, I got one. Let's go. Who you got? I'm got one. Go who? I'm going Andrew Luck. Wow. And yeah, re- man, that's a good one. The the reason reason is- you know another one, too? Oh, I got to go a little old school okay. now. Now, 
I I would just get beat up. Or what? So did somebody to back me up? Yeah. Yes. I'd like throw the first punch and say, "Time out. This is going to be my substitute," and I'd tag team Terry Bradshaw. Terry Bradshaw would fight somebody for sure. Oh my God. The reason I like Andrew Luck is Andrew Luck would be like, whatever you need, I'm your best friend. And he's like, I'm going to give you everything. And since we don't have to throw anything, you know, we're throwing punches. We're not throwing footballs. Yes. He can handle. Uh, you're fine. Oh, yeah. You know, Andrew you're Luck buddy. is, you know, yeah. He's, uh, he's also 240 country strong. pounds, or he's probably 235 now. But 225 of it is bone and tendons and stuff like that. I mean, we're, it's. We're missing he is one. a big structure. Who are we dude. missing? We're mi- I know we're missing one. Who? Dak Prescott for he, he'd have to be in that combo right he's now. He's a monster. Yeah, he'd be, be, he, he's thick and all that. And it, but, but is Dak um? Is, a, is he a, is, is he, he mean a, enough? Is he, he, yeah, is he, that's is what he I'm saying. A, Andrew you know. Luck is Andrew Luck is just ugly enough to want to fight people. <laughs> No, don't you know, say Dak, that. Dak, Dak has a pretty face. Uh, Philip Rivers has children to protect. Andrew Luck is out here just for the love of the game. All right, let's do one more question uh, uh, with go. Big Phil on the phone. Sims, you're picking the category okay, here. Okay, let's do. Um, hmm. Let's do. Let's do ridiculous football. I don't nice. think we've gotten one. We I was. Not. I was hoping you'd pick that one. John McGahey at J A McGahey on Instagram. What is more awkward? Both instances, Chris Sims is stuck in an elevator with either Tom Brady explaining why he didn't have him as the number one quarterback on his list or explaining to Blake Bortles why he talks so much shit and why he stinks and is at number 70 on your list. All right, let's ask this to Phil first. Phil. Wait, was there more to that? No, that was it. So you're in an elevator. So, Phil, your son is in an elevator. Oh, yeah, no, it's easy. If he's in the elevator stuck in there with Blake Bortles. (laughs) And you know, by the way, Blake Bortles. Yeah. Now he could be the he one that's back up in that fight. You're right. Let me tell you what. He's yes. not he's a giant. He is. And hell, you know, he gets hit, blindsided, and I think, oh man, and and nothing. Doesn't he just phase gets him. Up and, I know. Phil, what did you think about the whole Bortles as the seventieth quarterback thing as that was going on? Well, you know, I did, it's it's funny. I, I it took me a while to catch on. <laughs> so um I think Christopher was having fun with it. And then, of course, Dan Levitard them heard it, I guess. I, I don't even know the origin of it, how it came about. But it wasn't about hit quarterback. Was it quarterbacking no, it really or throwing wasn't. the ball? Yeah, it's throwing the ball more than anything. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think Blake Bortles is definitely the more awkward one. I, I would say so, too. I can be real with Tom. I don't yeah. think I'm going to be worried about that. And, I mean, the, and we want to get in the conversation with the flake gate in the, in the, in the uh, elevator with Tom, too. I could be real you with just get there. it all out of the way in the well, elevator? I could be real with it. I think Tom could pr- probably handle it, too. I do. The elevator, he yeah, might think, be truthful with right. you. You know, I will tell you this about you two today. Yeah. This is a very creative thinking by you. Uh, and you know that marijuana. You sure y'all didn't smoke a little marijuana when we all came on? <laughs> no, we, we, we did not. Because y'all got a little creativity today, <laughs> so maybe that's what y'all need well, to, to, to get something flowing in those <laughs> dumbass brains you got. Well, that doesn't mean we didn't do it to prepare for this show, but we didn't. We don't do it, uh, uh, you know, during the show, before the show. Never I need to come in stuff. clear-minded. Phil, you think I would allow that? What's that? You think I would allow that to happen before this podcast? I don't think you have any choice in it. <laughs> no, 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 no. That does not happen on my watch. Maybe on the Monday podcast oh, if I'm not great. here. That's great. All right, Phil. Thanks, Dad. Are you done. done with me? We're done with you. Get out of here. All right, way to go, boys. That was great. clever stuff. That Thanks, way. Man. Keep it up. See you, Dad. <laughs> He that really, he can really sit there. He like, I love how he he wants to rush us to call him every time. But he'll talk for two hours. But really, if we just kept him there and we were like, you know, you've been here for an hour, he would have been like, oh, has it been an hour already? <laughs> I mean, he's, he always acts like he's got something to do, but he's really got nothing to do. I love it. Left go. Yes. Category, your choice. Animals. I would Animals. Yeah, that was, that was funny. What were you going to say, love Chris? What? I would have loved to hear him. Talking about pot. Break me down, right? Because he does make fun of me every now and then. Like, if he calls me on a Friday night or something. Uh, I bet you right now you're getting real creative. He'll, 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 be like, he'll be like, oh, you've yeah. already been on the back patio, huh? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is one of two animal questions that we had. Uh, at Jack underscore Billing 7. Good morning. I'm an avid listener of the podcast and following on from the mascot battles. My dad and I Ooh. got into a heated battle into which animal would be best suited for every position in the NFL. I think that would be an interesting discussion, and I'd like to know which animal you could put where. That would take an entire podcast. It so would. I'm thinking let's do uh, quarterback, running back, and wide receiver here. What animals you want at each position? Oh, okay. Phil would pick Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> 
And I don't think it doesn't need to be like we don't have to be like which animal could hold a football. Like I'm thinking, I put a dolphin at quarterback. Right. You you got to pick an animal that has some brains. The traits of that athletic. position. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, yeah. Um, Actually, you know what? Let's do quarterback, running back, and D lineman. D lineman. Yeah. D lineman. I always think of rhinoceros. Okay. Like just a mean, angry rhinoceros. That's when I think, especially the D tackles. The DNs might be able, but the D tackles. I do. I just think of them as mean. Running back, I think of a warthog. Low center of gravity. Are they fast fierce. enough? Oh, baby. When they get a little steam behind them? Yeah. I was also thinking you could just cheat and make them a bird and just fly. Yeah, you, yeah you could. You know, you could stop a bird. You're right. You could. It's going to be tough for the uh, rhinoceros to jump Quarterback, I don't know. Quarterback is, in essence, saying, what is the most athletic animal that exists? No. Combined with smarts. No. No. You can't say that because I'm not going to. The cheetah doesn't get to be the quarterback or the leopard. You think or cheetah is the most athletic animal? Something, I actually think the leopard should probably be the running back, right? Because uh. they have great strength, size, combination. Agility. Right? They Agility. can cut through the holes. They're, they can catch a squirrel in a tree. Just think about that. A 180-pound cat can jump around a tree and catch a squirrel. It's insane, I've actually. i thought about it. Right. Yep. Sounds Same. like a running back Sounds to me. Sounds like a running back to me, right. And they can also carry double their weight up into the tree. Sounds like Saquon Barkley as we're talking about okay, this. Okay, well, I'm just telling you that but, if you're going to have a cat... At running back, having a dolphin at quarterback probably doesn't make sense. Well, we're not. This doesn't. Well, none of this makes a sense. Team? None of this makes sense. Okay. And then quarterback. Wait, what are some other smart animals we're missing in the world that we can put there? Well, a falcon. <laughs> An eagle. Yeah. Uh, uh, other sm- smart animals. Smart dogs. Like, uh, like the Australian shepherd. He's yeah. a real smart animal. Any uh, sh- like sharks? I think the quarterback should be poodles. That's really poodles? what they are. They're fucking poodles. Really smart, kind of uppity. Well groomed. Uh, well, very well groomed. Need to have their raccoon. white, white it. raccoon. Raccoon. For Crafty. A yeah. Absolutely. Nifty. Crafty, nifty, dirty. Yeah, dirty. Going through the sewers. Philip Rivers. <laughs> Phil Rivers is a raccoon. I'm right. gonna tell Philip Rivers my dad said that. I hope he whoops crap out of my dad. Chris, you're picking the next category. I love okay. Phil Rivers. Um, all right. I'm just trying to think of things we haven't hit here in a second. Well, we've hit every category. Let's so. go personal. Personal. Ooh. All right. Let me get the personal section up here. All right. Here we go. Uh, let's see here. Which I hope it's one? Diving deep. Which one do I want to go into here? Uh, all right. So let's go with this question from hey, Matt. First, play, 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 the snore, Katie. play the snore button. That's personal. <laughs> That's personal. Nice. That's my go. Good stuff. Thanks. Uh, all right. Tom Goff here at Kilgannon. Did any teams commit to Sims before the draft, and did any of them break their promise? Mm. Yes. I don't know if we've ever talked about this. I don't think so either. Yeah. Um, the Raiders. Yep. Um, the Raiders, Al Davis, they had the last two picks of the first round. 31st and 32nd pick because they had traded. Fabian tra- Washington. They had traded for John L. I mean, John Gruden to become the, the head coach. So, yeah, it might have. It was. Uh, I'm going to blank on his name. He was a defensive lineman from, from Colorado. U- Colorado, right? Um, and then it might have been. I can't remember who the other one is. Uh, but wait. But so what we'll happened to Promise? Up. But either way, Al, Al, when I left there, I'm not going to say he promised. Yep. But he he made me feel that if I was on the he he basically said if you're on the board at the end of the second, first round. Namdi Asamoah and, Asamoah and Tyler Tyler Braden. Tyler Braden, right? This was in person. You're in talking about in, in person, yes. And um, he he goes, if you're on the board, he goes at the end of the first, you're you're in our plans right now. We're really thinking about you. And I walked away. And of course, Mark Tressman was there at the time. Uh, Callahan was the head coach. Mm. And I walked away from all my visits, going, "Ooh, the Raiders like me the best." And I think there's a good chance the Raiders take me maybe with one of those last two picks of the first round. Now, I've always heard that I was still in their plans. I don't they know did what not happened. They quarterback in that draft. No, they did not. Um, they still had Gannon. I'm sure they have kind of felt like Gannon still had years left, which he really did. He got hurt the next year right. uh, with his neck injury. But that would be the one I looked at and go, mm, they led me to believe that they were going to be more serious. And, and I don't think they ever got serious with it. Yep. Because I think I would have heard from my agent the night before the draft or anything like that where he would have gone, Hey, the Raiders, there's still a chance there. I had a feeling the night before the draft that I was going to fall. I knew that already. My why, par- why did you have the feeling? Uh, because uh, my agent had basically got back to me like teams hadn't got back to him, and they all went dark, mm. and that's usually not a good sign. Gotcha. All right, yeah. let's, do, let's do one more question from this category while yeah. we're here. This one's for both of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt Stallcup at Penguin Moke 808 If you could play for any team today, where would you go? Ooh. Lefko, you want to start? This this soundboard is going to be perfect. I'm done. 
Yeah, yeah it's pretty good. for the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. Let's... You want to eliminate the Eagles and pick your second team that you would go to? Um, we did hmm. this for the college teams on the last mailbag, but yeah. we didn't do it for the pro teams. So uh, we're just picking the team that we'd want to play on, live in that today, city. Yeah, you want to live in the city, compete for Super Bowls, whatever's important to you. I where would say, you go? I mean, look, LeBron went to L.A. The Rams made a ton of trades this year. There's a lot of excitement about it. Uh, Chargers or the Rams, I think to be in a city like that uh, would be a lot of fun. Uh, I, I, I don't have any interest in living in Jacksonville, uh, but I think the Jaguars are exciting. But uh, I would probably pick the Chargers, actually. I like Anthony Lynn. I like L.A. Uh, and then also, like, to wear the San Francisco 49ers <laughs> and play for our, our favorite coach in the NFL, Kyle Shannon. That, that's a, spe- that's a, I, I it's think a special of no- jersey. I think of nostalgia first. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, the 49ers are one of those teams that certainly crossed my mind right up the top. I think the team that I, I, I would look for, there's so many things that play into this. But I think if you just tell me the things that are important, okay, living in the city, tradition, the fan base, all those things, I think of the Chicago Bears. I'm not going to pick the Giants. Of course, I know they're very they're special to me. But the Chicago Bears, I feel like if you could go to that city and you could be the man at quarterback and win a Super Bowl, oh my gosh, you're going to be you're going to go into another stratosphere of that city with the way they are sports fans. So Sims, if Chicago's on the clock, you'd be yelling. Pick oh me, man. man, pick me. Pick me. <laughs> All right, Sims. Next category. Um, all right, let's go back to pot. We haven't asked to talk about pot in a few let's minutes. Let's go back to pot. All right, so this question uh, coming from at Pipeville on Instagram. Good name. Stop. Pipeville. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. Do you All know right, this person? Joe. Oh, we do. Uh, <laughs> Without naming names. <laughs> you know this person? Yes. Oh. Without naming names, you have too. Sims tell us the story of the first NFL player he ever smoked weed with. Mm. Without Ooh. naming names. Yes. Don't uh, dry snitching. And actually, before you even answer the question, yeah. what did this happen before you got to the NFL? Or was this once you were in the league? No, Good was, question. Yes, no, no. Uh, the first time I had a real smoke session in the NFL with teammates and stuff like that, I would say really, you know, I might have had like a few little rookie, like one or two guys there, whatever, end of June. But I think like the first time I sat down was after training camp my rookie year. Like training camp had broke. Now we're at home going through your normal schedule, but you're still in the preseason and I'll, I, I can at least name one guy. I know he won't sure? care. Yeah, Dwight Smith ain't going to care. He was a part of that session. He knows it. I mean, that, was, that was my buddy, right? That was my best friend on the team. So, yeah, a lot of the times I'm not going to name the rest of the people there. But, damn, we were, let's get to Dwight's house after practice. If we knew we had time and nothing the next day, there was going to be about four or five other guys there. He had a real huge couch around a huge TV. Uh some people were going to roll up, and there was going to be more than one to two. There was going to be two to three bunts going at the same time yeah. in opposite directions. Were and you watching games? Well, or you always, just... always watching games. And if we weren't watching games, we were playing Madden against each other gotcha. at that point, too. But, yes, NBA, like NFLs. Yeah, it really yeah. was, basically, except we had money. And then we had uh, Dwight, D- Dwight's homie, my man Zeke was his name. His name was Dink. But I didn't understand what they were calling him for the so long time, him Zeke. and I was calling him Zeke, and they didn't tell me until like <laughs> until we got back from Tokyo, and they go, "Why do you call him Zeke?" And I said, "Because that's his name." And they said, "No, his nickname is Dink." And I was like, "Damn, I thought you've been calling him Zeke. I've been calling him Zeke for three they all months." Have like a southern accent. Yeah, so like, I Dink. still call him Zeke to this day, and I go Zeke. And but he was what the roller? Zeke was not only the roller. Uh, he was, I mean, the man skilled in very many areas. But I'll tell you the thing: he came in handy in the smoke I'm nervous. Is, nope, his cooking, his wings. He made the best fried chicken wings. I put them against any restaurant in New- in the whole country. That's he- invaluable. The best Huge. wings there are came from Zeke. So he was always there, and he was always cooking. He was my man. He Do you just- think that a lot of people have groups like that? Yes. I mean— um, Yes, I do. Yeah. I mean, as we know, I mean, without getting too deep into this topic, you know, guys got, you know, they come from nothing. They've been around nothing. Their family, in a lot of cases, is really their best friends, right? Because maybe they're all living together. So they all go there. They live together and everybody's got their role within the squad. First time you smoked. First time. Were you nervous? Were you like, guys, like, are we sure? Like, oh, I was. I was high school. I really thought. No, I meant meant in college. I meant in NFL. Oh, like, no. did you already get drug I knew, tested? I knew I was tested, right? I knew I was good. So I was, yeah, I was ready to go. When you're the rookie smoking with the veterans, are yeah, you like, cool. damn, I, I can't be believe in, who I'm smoking yeah, with right, right. now. I got to be invited. It's uh, okay. certainly not. And then it's probably got to be cleared. Like, I'm not, again, I'm not going to name the other people that are there, but I'm sure Dwight 
cleared it with uh, like, hey, I'm bringing the uh, the, the corny white boy quarterback over. Is everybody cool with that? And yeah. they're like, oh yeah, he's okay, or whatever. Man. The yeah. early the early two thousands bucks backwoods oh. too backwoods <laughs> yeah. Ooh, well. big talk about a big offseason. <laughs> uh, all right, Lefko, you're up here. Seriously. All right, so uh, let's go ridiculous football again. All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, I've actually been looking forward to asking this one. So this is from Cam Nadu on Instagram. Hey Adam, big fan of the show. Got a hey, question. Cam. Hey, Cam. I uh, got a question you and Sims might like to argue on the podcast. Which NFL player would make the best team if they cloned themselves and played at every position? Mm. For example, a team oh, of right. 53 Julios versus a team of 53 Khalil Max. Mm. Wow. That's a really interesting question. Yeah. So the first thing when I saw this question, the first thing I thought of is you need someone who can play every position. Exactly. You can't put an offensive lineman at running back because they'll get tackled 10 yards. You know, so. Yeah. I thought like a 53 Gronks was the first thing I, I thought th- of. I was going to go tight end. Yeah. Because they could do like a little O-line, D-line, can run and catch. 53 Travis Kelseys. Yeah, right. Like that to me, I'm thinking of other ones, you know. I don't know, man. Good luck up against Oh, 53 Fletcher Coxes. You know what I mean? Holy crap. You're right. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to throw or catch. So you're going to be a ground game, pretty heavy ground game. Hey, man. Zig, when you uh, We're going to fill the box with a lot of Gronkses. What about, I was going to say Landon Collins. I know. It's, it's got to be those, like, in between guys that are got strength and brute in size. What but about also... 53 Todd Gurley's? Now, <sighs> just in line play. Would Julio be an issue. is interesting. Julio and Khalil Mack are both good ones. I, I, I that's that's where my mind goes. Do you goes. more go offensive or defensive? I, I do think offense, just because I think of throwing. Like I, when I think of Khalil Mack, I'm like, oh, I wish I could see him throw a ball one right. time. Because he might, it might be a disaster. It might be a total disaster. What about 53 Cam Newtons? Wow, that is that's, that's an dangerous. interesting one. It is. It is. You know, because you see him out there. I mean, there's only one quarterback you could even say like, take on that. Do you know what actually might be the best one? Patrick Peterson. We know that Patrick Peterson can throw. He wins a lot of those throwing competitions against Carson Palmer he over does, the year. Yes. And he's a 4-3 guy. Right. And he's got good hands, and he punt returns, kick returns. He's a very – but on the lines, you're going to be up That's against That's where you're going to be in trouble, right. Um, yeah, I think I would go with Gronks. 53 Gronks. 53 Gronks. I left would. I, and I hold – I hold a side of me that goes, man, if I could just see Von Miller or Khalil Mack throw the football, I might have picked them. I just don't know. I've seen Gronk throw it. So you know he can do it. I know he can do it to like at least complete to the wide open ones. Yep. Um, Give us your pick, Lefko. Will you raise me a Zach Ertz? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just Lefko, every answer is an Eagles answer. Eagle guy. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to settle JJ in. J.J. Watt. I'm going to settle in. I know who I'm picking. I am going to go for 53 Miles Jacks. Oh, wow. That's a good one. That's Thank a lot, of, that's a lot of biceps. Miles Jack is big enough to I'm play any he position. Throw it too. He could play safety, <laughs> linebacker. He could rush the passer. He, he back. played some running right. back. It's either him or Shaq Thompson. I'm going Miles Jacks. Go Miles. So that's a good one. I in forgot a game, about him. In a game of 53 yes. Gronks versus 53 Miles Jacks, who do we think wins? Oh, man. Miles, that's got me thinking. I'm guessing he can throw, too. He can do everything yes, else. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Hell yeah, I won. That's All right. a win. Sims, pick your category. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, what haven't we picked here in a little bit? Have we taken animals? Oh, uh, we've done one animals. And one legs and ass and one real football. It's got to be one of those three. All right. Let's go animals. Let's go animals. All right. This is, a, this is a quick one. Our last animals question here, then animals is off the board. Uh, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? It's Jared Ernzen. Mm. 100. Quick answer here. 100 uh, duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Ooh, I think I'd go with the the first one. 100 duck-sized horses. Man, a, da- a horse that's a duck, is that's going to scary. Right. Okay, they might, first of all, their beak and their flapping of the wings could be very dangerous. The duck-sized horses, size. you just mow them over. I feel like I could just yeah. throw haymakers, just twist in a circle and throw my fist out, and I'm going to win that I one. I guess you have to ask yourself this. Do you want to die against one duck that eats you, or do you want to go down with your arm in the air as you are completely covered by little baby horses why, why you already, as they stamp your face? Why are you face? admitting defeat? Why are you admitting defeat? You're just taking defeat. Like, I'm going to lose both. Do I, I wanna... just think whenever this question's asked, people underestimate how much a 100 is. It's a lot. I know. If yeah. there was 100 little horses coming at you, for me, if it's one, I have to find one weakness. The other way, I need to be kicking and punching 
constantly it's an endurance or else they battle. trample me. I don't have endurance. I'm gonna. I want it to be like cone heads, where all I need is one shot of a of a pebble into the the big duck's face. <laughs> all right, left go. Pick so, the next. Pick the next category what, here. Cone heads. You don't that remember happens? that part in the movie? In cone this heads? is for a lot of our audience. No, but I, in cone heads, he goes up there. I'm from France. And, I'm from France, and he has like the golf club because he yeah. learned how to play golf. Right. And there's this big monster chasing him, and he hits the golf, the rock, and it hits him right in his throat, and he's like, <laughs> and then he dies. Yeah. Cone heads. Really I'm from France. That. Pick your category, left go. Uh, legs and ass. Legs and ass. All right, here we go. Uh, legs and ass. Let's see. All right. Legs. At Paul underscore Kessler. Pull up the teams here, guys. Yeah. Uh, rank the top five legs and ass of the starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Oh. Keep up the great work. Hashtag legs and ass. Hashtag Kyle Shanahan is the best coach in the NFL. Amy. Looking for top five quarterback bodies here. Yep. All right. So Russell Wilson is. Let, let's. Let, we don't have to be in order, but let's just get him on the yep. page. I'm right Russell down Wilson, here. Dak Prescott. Is Cam Newton up there? I'm picking all the athletes. Yeah, hold on. I checked out for a second. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Well, Kyle we, Shanahan actually just texted me. That's why. What did he say? Yeah, what did he say? He told me, don't let Lefko come around this week. We don't need to see him. Damn it. Yep. <clears throat> um, no. Um, Best legs and ass. I've put down already Russell Wilson. Yes. Cam Newton. And Dak. And Dak Prescott. Yeah, Russell and Dak are definite. I got to just think about a second for um, Cam. Cam's legs and ass, although impressive, are not as godly as the rest of his body. Yes. Okay? Um, he's got nice legs. He doesn't have Patrick a Mahomes. great ass. He The guy does have a great ass. I'll say that. Carson right. Wentz. Hold on, though. We're missing. Wentz has got pretty impressive lower body. But I think your two right off the bat are definite. Um, I'm, we're staying with starters, too, right? I actually think that Drew Brees has a good legs and ass. He squats like 800 pounds. I got I got uh, six quarterbacks written down right now. Okay. Hmm. That's all I got. I think those two. This is I, the most serious. Josh Sims has Allen been. has good legs and ass. I, 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 we got the rookies. I know. I was also thinking of like Mitchell Trubisky. He's got a, a nice legs and ass too. Jacoby Brissett. I'm like thinking about, but I don't know if he's like a starter yet or if we're classifying that. Um, all right. So right now we have Dak and Russell Wilson. Okay, Dak, Russell Wilson. So of Jacoby, Cam, Mahomes, Carson Wentz, Drew Brees, Dak, Josh Allen, and Trubisky. Dak, Russell Wilson, yes. Uh, Cam is going to have to go on there for sure. Um, I think Dirk Carr, Derek Carr has a nice little legs and tush on him, actually. I think he's got a really well-put-together legs and tush, if you want to look it up, okay? <laughs> Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, I know what you mean. Drew Brees is, is. Right? Yeah, it is. There's something there. Uh, Wentz, I feel like I want to go Wentz, though, is the number five guy. So you got Russell, Dak, Cam, Wentz, and Derek Carr. I think so. I know Carr might surprise people, but Carr's got a, a little bit more there. There's a little more thickness to that man than uh, I think people would realize yeah. if you met him in person. You want to rank those five? Okay, Russell is number one. One, one. Dak is close. two. Mm. Cam, Derek, and Carson. <laughs> and then I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go, I feel like I'm going to go. This has been riveting. Personally, I like to grind it in a little. Ooh, I know you do. <laughs> Lefko loves his little soundboard over there. I'm going to go Cam. Because I say so. Wentz Carr. Cam, Wentz Carr. So yeah. that's Russell. Dak, Cam, Wentz, and Carr. Right. There you have it, folks. All right, so, there Josh, I need you to get pictures of each of their butts. Yep. Yeah, we'll, we'll do make that. An Instagram and we'll self scout. Instagram we'll post. Self scout that. I honestly think Sims focused harder on that than maybe your mock draft this year. <laughs> I mean, you just went. I feel like I had to really think about this yeah. one. The mock draft. I mean, I was prepared for it. I was you've, ready to yeah, go. and you've put it's a flag in the ground that this is this is the thing that uh, yes. that you are known for. Yes. All right. Pick the next category, Chris. Okay, next one, and we're going to go to, uh, I want to go real football again. Real football. Real All right. football. Real. J.R. Cab 17, in regards to the Second Amendment of the podcast Constitution. 
Aaron Rodgers or is no, guys, Kyle, Kyle Shanahan? Oh my the god, coach. that was embarrassing. <laughs> uh, will Kyle Shanahan ever hire an offensive coordinator? I understand and trust Staley's comments that Shanahan is a next level genius, but even geniuses need help. Look at Belichick; he had a defensive coordinator most of his tenure as coach of the Patriots. I just wonder if an extra set of eyes on the offense could propel the Niners past the division and help them make the playoffs. Um, I think that's that, definitely not the issue right now. I, I think the, the the thing I would look at is more than anything. No, I don't think he's going to ever give anybody the uh, title of offensive coordinator. That's that's definitely not going to happen. Now, uh, to what's starting to happen in the NFL, right. lot, and you notice this on the Rams, they don't have the offensive coordinator. Right. They have a... Uh, Aaron Cromer is the running game specialist, right. and Shane Waldron is the pass game specialist. There you go. So that's what I could see start happening more and more. I think it's happening as it's already happening. So you're right. I think it is something, especially when you have the offensive coordinator head coach. That's it's going to be. But even like a Josh McDaniels in New England, he has no quarterback coach because he's the offensive coordinator, mm. and he goes, you know what? I don't want anybody. I'm going to relay my message to the quarterbacks directly, so I'm going to be both. Um, I don't think anybody's going to get that title. I think that's part of why owners are also hiring the McVeighs or Shanahan's because they look at it and go, I'm paying you for this. You're I want awesome. 30 points right. per game. And you can save me some money by not giving somebody else that title. I think that's part of the selling point to right. go, well, that's one less thing on the books. So. Again, I think McVeigh, Shanahan, those guys will never have that OC guy, but don't get it messed up that they're not going to be open to ideas and listen from other people. Like, yeah, they're, what they say might be the final rule, but at the end of like, the, all week, they are two guys that are willing to listen to other ideas and what people do. I mean, Kyle was the offensive coordinator, you know. Okay, Kyle, uh, I mean, I don't even know what McVeigh's. Well, Matt LaFleur was the OC for the Rams last year. Yes, he was. And, now and he's then in, moved on to yes, Tennessee. So Titans he was the official OC, too, of their yeah, team last that's year. What it says. So I bet you, like, McVeigh basically did him a solid last year and said, I'll make you the OC to help you and out. And this year, just run game, pass game. Right. Like, we saw this with the Eagles. You get, like, three great coaches DiFilippo, Frank Reich, Doug Peterson. You can really create magic. Yes. Uh, but I don't think that's the issue with the 49ers going forward. I think it's defense, defense, defense. And Kyle so is going to scheme you in a way to get get some points to make it competitive. Yes. Sims, you're up. Um, well, he just I just did took real football. football. Yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry. Left yeah. go. And we're out of legs and ass. We're out of animals questions. All right. I would like pot. You would like pot. All right. So this is going to be our last uh, our last pot question here. Okay. Uh, Chris, you touched on this a little bit before. Got to re-up. Liam Owen 30. How does Big Phil feel about the devil's lettuce and his son's prolonged use of the blessed grass? My dad, Phil Sims. My dad. Uh, he, he doesn't love it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I do it, I mean, yeah, he does not. He, he's he's come to this point of his life where uh, it's just he understands this is me and that's what I do, and he doesn't judge me. I think that's, you know, a lot like the older generation. I don't think they, you know, quite understood it until it got around them a little bit. Um, I, you know, am the type of person that does do it in front of them. Like, I, I'm not, I wasn't, like, when I had time off and – what about you when you're playing? Well, I, when I was playing, like I told you, I was in the drug program for six out of the eight years. So you were not doing so it. So I wasn't doing it very often, right. Was but that something that your dad was on you about, he, though? Well, yeah, he definitely was. Oh, he knew, how many he knew my issue. lectures did you get? Yeah, he knew my issue. He knew I, I had usually told him. I don't know if he knew I was suspended or out of uh, on the program for six out of the eight years. But I also, anybody would tell you, like, and as you guys know, I'm a very honest person as far as I just I wear it on my sleeve. If you want to know what I think about something, I'm going to tell you. You probably are going to hear about it before you even ask me anyways. Because I say so. That's damn right. So uh, at some point, I'm going to say around 30 or 31, when I would come home in the summer or have time off or whatever, like I was like, man, I'm sick of like hiding in the woods to smoke a joint. And I was like, no, fuck you. You want me here at the house? I'm going to be on the back patio. You guys can drink. That's killing more people than anything. But I can't sit here and hit the weed, you know, three or four times. So that's how he, I first kind of broke him down. Right. He doesn't love it, uh, of course, because he's a father and it's not the healthiest thing in the world. But I think he he understands it's what I like to do to cut loose. And you I'm know not what he's drinker. worried about? He's worried that as Chris gets older, he's going to become. Hey, Quentin, what's up, man? <laughs> hey, man. Thanks, Jim Where's Irsay. the ween, man? All right. Uh, Stay off. Whose choice? Are you up? Uh, I can't I just keep track. Asked pot. All right, so Sims, you're up. So remaining categories here, real football, ridiculous football, 
personal self scouting, and uh, that's it. No more Big Phil either. All right, let's go personal. Was that let's the last go, pop too? Uh, yes, it was. All right, so let's go personal here. Um, let's see, which one do I want to go with? I'm just here so I won't get fined. All right, I'm done. No, you're not. It's mm. really hard. With There's your soundboard? There's so many buttons. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is a good one because you'll – this is this is going to be fun. All right, uh, at Ben's 296, Sims, if you had to compare Lefko as a Bleacher Report employee and podcast host to a current NFL player, who would it be? Oh, gosh. Golly. A lot of pull up the teams this episode. A lot of pull up the teams. Who so he's a, comparing me to who? An NFL, an NFL player. As a Bleacher Report employee, who who is his pro player comparison? I know what I just thought of. Tony Ramoski? Uh-uh. So Lefko, as an employee, um, very creative guy. Yes. Crushes it on the podcast every week. Little disorganized, needs help with his calendar at times. Yes. So, you know, you can't always trust him to show up on time. But creative, lots of great ideas. And when he does show up, you know he's going to kick ass. He's bringing the A game. So who is that guy that's a little de- undetailed like that? You know, can be a bit of a diva, right? And uh, I, I thought of receiver, like I've thought of, like you know, OBJ, that type of guy. He's not quite that good, so I'm not going to give him OBJ. Uh, <laughs> I'm just sitting waiting. <laughs> yes, uh, I've never thought about this, so I'm just trying to think of those strengths right there. Do you Patrick, have? Do you got one? Uh, no, I don't have one actually. Okay, I'm not I, I ask the questions. Okay. Do you have someone in your mind? Yeah, but okay. I'm going to wait for Sims. Hmm. coming hold on oh my gosh we can we can be added here Jeez. um i know i don't I, i'm thinking i receivers are the ones that all seem to come to my head he's not a linebacker or anybody on the defensive side of the ball right he's not That's, a d lineman no he's way. not an o lineman no he's like he's a running back he's david johnson <laughs> the correct answer is big ben <laughs> Slightly out of shape, kind of a control freak, a lot of a diva. Doesn't really work that hard in practice, nah. but shows up for the games. Nah, I think you're less of a diva and a nicer person than Big Ben. Uh, you don't know me my <laughs> personal life. By the way, I flattened all your tires. and <laughs> I like the David Johnson one. I gave your son a wedgie. But I feel like it is. It's David, something... David Johnson is a very nice combo. Yeah, well, it is. It's, it's, it's like he's, he's about to hit the scene in a big way. Like... <laughs> The people in the business know he's big time, okay? But the rest of the mainstream world hasn't caught on yet. I'm Tevin Coleman. Uh, you're right. Something, <laughs> something like that. But also, there, there's that receiver element. But that's the problem where I can't. Right. The, his body makeup just oh, is so hard for me to think tape. receiver. Ooh, that could be it. Wow. That could be it. Who was your uh, your taint? Algie Crump. Oh, yeah. Your big ass yeah, tight end. Yeah, there. Algie Crump. Good old Algie. <laughs> that's, been, that's your actual football playing pro player comparison. Yes, exactly. Uh, all right. Who's up here? Left go? I am. Uh, that, was, that took me too long. Ridiculous football. Okay, here we go. What was that last one? Was that personal? That was, that was personal. personal. Yeah, that was personal. All right, so at Hunter Westfall here, with the new Jurassic Park movies creating hybrid <laughs> dinosaurs, I want Ooh. y'all to create a perfect hybrid quarterback of the guys currently in the NFL. Mm. So he said size, speed, arm strength. Uh, so let's let's go with those three categories, All and right. let's go with uh, head as well. So size, speed, arm strength, and whose brain do you want? Let's go let's... with brain first. So when I think of brain, I'm thinking Brady. Yeah. I'm thinking Breeze. Those are my two head guys. I think I got to go it's Brady. I got to go Brady too. I, I've reached the point with Brady where his ability to just pick apart a defense and come out there and just completely shift everything right. is incredible. Everything. They're just the way he's approached his. You know. Remember when he was the dumb one compared to Peyton? I, and it's, it's amazing. You know what's so funny is, I mean, I've actually was thinking about this today. I mean, just first of all, Tom. Yeah, I mean, Tom, the brain for thinking ahead of. Off the field, like, oh, I'm going to start doing this training and this yes. eating and all yes. those things that have gone into it, let alone— Yeah, Peyton was still wearing his helmet in the jacuzzi. Or trying to get—I you know, I'm, I'm want to get done so I can drink beers. Remember you were saying, that? yeah, while you were drinking beers and you're losing miles per hour in your fastball, Tom was at home drinking spinach shakes yeah. and still throwing and it 100 miles to... per hour. This and isn't... tinkering with his arm motion, which is where well, I always think about Peyton dropped off because that goes into the brain, too, of what you're saying with Brady. Brady Brady was smart enough to realize my throwing motion's a little off. I'm yes. not maximizing. Let me retool and refix. Tom Brady is so healthy that if you offered him tomatoes, he'd say, no thanks. 
You're so healthy that vegetables are cheating. Right. That's crazy. So Brady's brain. Arm strength. We're going Josh with. Allen or Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers still. I can't give those guys that list. Is that arm strength or is that arm power? I'm just going. If we're going arm anything, it's Aaron Rodgers. I don't give a shit if it's a okay. touch throw, okay. Okay. a deep throw, Accuracy. a rifle, a quickness in the release. All of that is Aaron Rodgers. Accuracy. Accuracy. That's where. Hmm. I mean, you know, I, I tend to want to go Aaron Rodgers there again, but I think if we're going to just spread the wealth here, yeah, that's where we go Drew Brees. I think Drew Brees, he, Drew Brees is so great at putting the ball in the right spot for his receiver, right. leading the slant, back shoulder, kind of invented the back shoulder a little bit. Yeah, he did. I mean, Let's go no speed doubt. next. And then speed, Lamar. Lamar Jackson. By the way, a lot of people DM'd me and said at Louisville, do you have this somewhere else? Oh yeah, that he ran a uh, four three three. Yeah, and that was his like sophomore year or something like that. That's cool. That's good to know though. Yeah, he ran I think a little bit slower than Jair Alexander, who ran like a four three one. So, but in okay. the four three three, and I'm not going to say it wasn't laser because it definitely wasn't laser. But also, you could say I don't know, like Shaquem Alexander. Uh, Shaquem Griffin, you know, he might run a little faster because he's so jacked up. Well, so I think Lamar would have run a four two five. I mean, well, that's usually what they say, though. Like in all seriousness. But then also the laser. Well, yes, but usually they, that's like something that is planned for in the combine preparation is that you're going to adrenaline and all those things that aren't really like hitting on all cylinders for the workout on a yeah. random Wednesday. How much does that give you? Well, I, I know like our guy always thought it would be like maybe like a, a, a tenth, some, not a tenth, a hundredth, sorry. I think okay. he was probably like just saying that to you go, No, I think he really did. A hundredth, two hundred. Like if you ran a four, seven, eight that on the day, you could run four, seven, six. I know I was hopped up. Like, man, I've never been that nervous. And I got to find video of you And like I told you, I was running down the track, and I promised you as my arms were pumping, I was going, I'm running the 40th of the combine. I'm running the 40th of the combine. I'm running the 40th of the combine. What did I run? Uh, and then we got to think of legs. So we're going Lamar, uh, even though we haven't seen him play yet. Yeah, I'm going to go with speed. Russell Wilson what are you right a, now. What are you asking me? I have I no know, idea. I'm going with Russell Wilson. Lamar doesn't get a body part because he hasn't done anything yet. Oh. We can't size, that. size was the last one. Oh, and that goes Cam. Right. Right. So I would put Russell's legs. Cam Newton wins that one because every person we've ever had says, when he walks in the field, you go, holy crap, I've never seen a human being built like right. this. Right. So that is your hybrid quarterback here. Thank you, Hunter Westfall. Brady's brain, Cam size, uh, Russell's speed, Russell's legs, Roger's arm, Breeze's accuracy. Right. Mm, I like that. I like that, too. And I will say I will add in Stafford's arm angle. Like the ability to throw it from all the arm angles. Left go getting deep in the weeds uh, over here. I just got a bleacher report alert, and I got to tell you, man, it is a <laughs> big off season. Kawhi big Leonard's time. going to the Lakers. Whoa. Big off Kawhi season. Kawhi Leonard's going to the Lakers. No, it's more football. Oh. Patrick Peterson says about Josh Rosen, quote, Josh blew my mind my first week with him. Oh. He's the future of our franchise. Oh, baby. Oh, my gosh. Good, good thing you wore that T-shirt today. Look at my T-shirt. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Big off season. All right. Uh, who's up here? Who's picking the next question? It Blue is Sims. Mind. Which one haven't we picked enough of? Self-scouting, I guess. Yes. Self-scouting. All right. Let's go to self-scouting here. Uh, all right. This one is from at Richie Sully. I applaud Sims for being forthcoming, but Adam, how do you never give him shit for this? One episode, <laughs> excited. One episode, Chris says NFL teams labeled me a party boy because they saw me on Sixth Street one time. Then two episodes later, he talks about failing the drug test. It reminds me of Chappelle's Rick James skit when he says, "Why should I step on a man's couch? I got more sense than to do that." Fuck Hell yeah, couch. I stepped on his couch. Love the show. <laughs> Cocaine's a hell of a drug. So you say that teams uh, labeled you as a party boy because sure. you were out one time, but right. then you admit to being on the drug program six out of your eight years you're, in the it, league. It, you're right. There's hard. That's hard to defend uh, because I guess what I'm saying as far as like labeling as a party boy in college, you know, again, I, not that I, I'm not. I was never trying to say I was squeaky clean. Like I drank, I smoked pot in college, all that. I, I was a college student, but I was not revolving my life around partying. And was there that's... anyone in your draft class that was truly a party boy? Mm. We're about to dry snitch on somebody. Uh, I, I'm just trying to think of my draft class. Let, let's, let me, let me... What is in your mind a, a party guy? Then? A party guy that's like... I'll a, pull up your draft that, class. That, that the partying is the only thing that matters to him. It's, oh, it's every... You know, it's it's five nights a week. He finds some way to get out, get out and do something. Manzel. Get his buzz on, whatever it may be, where... Yeah, listen, I like to have fun, but I was like, 
that you couldn't get me to go out, really. That's what I'm saying. So the, the drug, I know I wasn't perked. Now, the drug program thing, and too. And the drug program, you failed one time. And yeah. then yeah, well, I failed one time, got in for two years, right? Right. And then I lost my spleen, and I thought I was clean and I had smoked, but just, I didn't know that the spleen was so intricate in cleaning that out. The spleen is the filter for your body. So then it got me again, uh, and then I got in trouble with my non-guilty DUI that yes. I got in uh, down in Houston. And in you got cleared Soho. from all that. Though. Well, I got cleared, but I had to be. I never failed an NFL drug test that time around. But I had to stay in the drug program just because I was arrested that night uh, for like six months. All right, and, so you had extenuating circumstances. Right. There's the 2003 NFL draft. Yeah, dry snitch on. Well, I, I'm not dry snitch on anyone, but I, I mean, I mean, I don't think like there was certainly. I remember rumors of Charles Rogers who ended up. Being somewhat of a bust, right? Yeah, for the Lions, for the wide Lions. receiver from Michigan State. But other than that, I don't see anybody. I'm just going over the rest of these. Was guys. Kyle Bowler a party guy? No, Kyle was a good dude. Um, Ice Cube mm. would not be down for this. No, he doesn't like this. No. But it was, you know, 15 years ago. Well, the past, yeah, it's the past. Not, it's uh, like Charles Rogers. I, it, I, I just, I don't even know if it was party issues. How about this? Could you see? But, you're now a vet. Yeah. Could you see the rookies that yes. came in? Yes. What were the telltale signs? Uh, you could always just tell the rookies who were like, you're like, damn, they don't know if he's got it. Because every night is, oh, we did this last night at the club last night. We saw this girl and she had two cheeks that were asses. And then the next night they come in and they like, it's the whole story again. There was two girls there last night. You should have seen it. And I just want to That's like, the funny thing about. They're all over the so place. So I know a lot of the people that listen to us are in their 20s and early 30s and they party. And it's really fun. It's great. But right. when you're not partying and people tell you party stories it's the same story all the time oh man so i had, you you saw, it. I had two shots right. of jaeger right. one tequila right. one gin Next and then you like, know they played this song and we all were like oh my god they played that song yeah it's funny it is funny it's but when guy. you're living that life is the best life. Yeah, well, I, I get it. It's understand, but you also start to get a feel too because it's always also, that guy. Also, you're an NFL player. It's an NFL player, but it's also that guy who's like the we're supposed to be on the field for a nine o'clock run workout in May, and it's always that guy who runs in the locker room at eight fifty seven, fully dressed, maybe from what he was wearing last night. Still, no way. Yes, or he's wait that happens. Definitely people wearing their going out clothes. Definitely, and or, how do they perform? Or or they can usually get the workouts done. You guys are. Nuts. I know. Or how or they've like literally. Woke up at 845, and they've timed out the drive takes 10 minutes, and I'm going to show up, and I can get dressed in 37 seconds and get out there. And they're out there, and you could tell, like, oh, damn, I can smell the alcohol Have on you still. ever practiced hungover? No, only in that high school story I think I told you oh, about. Oh, yeah. That, that was wasn't the only one ever. The only one ever. Wow. I yeah. Even in the NFL, you were never hung over for a practice. Never. I would never do anything like that. I've never I, – I, I approach it too seriously. And I, like I said, even with – you know, my marijuana smoking, like I told you, I'm schedule regimented oh, where yeah. I like to it's do it. It's never going to affect. I am never. Well, like, he's never going to do it when he has to work. When out. I have to do something, I just don't like it. I don't feel as good at doing my job. Yeah, what if Sims I is like, like Friday, 602? Yeah, it's time. It's time. Exactly right. Yeah, right. Good job. Uh, good job self-scouting there. Also from Richie Sully, he said, uh, I just got my Whoa Big Offseason t-shirt in the mail. I'm yeah. wearing one too. Nice shirt. Whoa. I'm heading to Austin in July. Any bars with some good Sims memorabilia in it? Lifelong Ooh. Giants fan will fly from Hawaii for an invite to Big Fuckers. <laughs> I don't. There's so much has changed since I've been there. Like red, a, uh, red Fez. They don't have your uh, back in my red. day. Side Street was the place we used to go. All these other stores. They they've turned over so much. Sixth Street, Fifth Street. If you're at the airport, go to Salt Lake. Yep, Salt Lake. Okay. You got to do a little like. I was uh, very upset. I got there late and it was close. It was close, like Lake Travis, Lake Austin, something like that. Get out on the lakes. That's always cool. Yeah, the true thing is, I think that if you're in Austin, having just gone there again, and I, if you're young and you want to do the bar scene, that street is really, really cool. Yeah, there are so many cool places in Austin. Yeah, there's like these little watering holes that like you don't even know unless you're a local, and you can just like sit out there and drink. And also like get on the lake. Yeah, get on the lake. Get in a cove. Sit up with your boys. Get on the boat. Just dock up decks to another boat and just this call party it boy over here. Off Guy went to school there. Yeah, wouldn't draft you, Lefko. I'd have a lot of concerns about you. Oh. <laughs> All right, uh, we got about ten. I'm gonna tell the story right now. Yeah. So I was day drinking, 
And I was wearing a Reggie Bush Saints fake authentic jersey in when college. When was this? Oh, college. This is in college that I had gotten from this Chinese distributor. I was selling jerseys at Syracuse to people. And if you, I could get like authentic jerseys, but the problem is sometimes the numbers would come in too close together. So all the ones that didn't look good, I would just wear. And I had been day drinking, and it was in Syracuse. It's not Austin. Austin. Every day is a party day. No big deal. Syracuse. Could be a blizzard. Spring hits. You would have thought that we had been in Alaska for 40 days. No one's going to class. We're all on the front porch. And I have been day drinking. I'm feeling good. And I get a phone call. Hey, Adam, how are you? Uh, this is NFL Films. Uh, we thought we'd do our phone interview right now. Do you have any time? And I'm like, hell yeah, I got time. <laughs> and they're like, all right. And they're asking me all these questions. He says yes. And they go, and they're asking me all the questions, and they get to one point where they're like, listen, we do have a concern. Uh, we do see on your resume that you really don't have any football experience. And, you know, there will be some watching a film. We want to know that we want to know what you're talking about. And again, I'm a little. And I go, listen, if you want to talk about the difference between a 4 3 and a 3 4, or about the zone coverages of a cover two or a cover three, and I'm literally like holding my Madden joystick and just like going through the defensive, I go, we could talk about blitzes, zone blitzes, or even a middle linebacker double A gap blitz. I said, we could do all that. And she goes, oh, you clearly know what you're talking about. <laughs> then I got the internship. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. That's a key to being a party boy sometimes. Uh, got to be able to talk your way out of it. Just it on your feet, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, you're next good category at that. here. Yeah. And I was like, by the way, I know that you guys are in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Any chance that new NFL network open up, you could send me to California? They're like, we do have a spot. I go, oh my God. All right. See hang you up. in Los Angeles. God, I'm on the porch. I'm like, hey, I'm going to LA. Yeah. Good time. That's amazing. All right. Time. What category you guys I would have to totally next? chickened out and be like, you know what? Can I talk to you tomorrow? Me back. Good. I'm, I'm, well, because you would have been hiccuping and burping in your <laughs> mouth. <the whole> time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> I want to do personal. Personal. Okay. Personal. And then we got some good football questions here. You guys okay, don't want okay. to talk any we'll football. Do that. We'll go there next. All right, uh, personal questions. Lefko, I'm sorry, but most of the personal questions were directed towards, uh, towards your counterpart here. All right, then I'll just try and keep up coming with good stories. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alverson, uh, Alverson Ethan, how the hell did Chris Sims meet his wife? Ha -ha. I met her uh, in high school. At a friend's house in high school. Yes, I knew, um, I knew there was this new girl coming back into town that I had not known about, but people were talking about her, and she was going to a— Very she's all that. She was going to a friend of mine, a girlfriend of mine's house that one night. Personally, and, I like to grind it in a little. Oh, man, I, I was trying to grind it in her that <laughs> night, let me tell you. Uh, I met her there, though. <laughs> high school. <laughs> Easy with the soundboard, High school buddy. party. High school friend's house. Went from there. I pursued her hard. Right? Relentlessly. Relentlessly. That's right. And uh, she kind of fought me off for a little while until she couldn't resist anymore. Because Texas. I say so. <laughs> she went to school. She was here in New York. I was at Texas. We were on and off my first three years, a few years in the NFL. We were on and off. I put her through hell. She stayed with me, and that's, that's the, and the story. That's history. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and now, and now I deal with that. <laughs> You got any more soundboard effects there? No, no, okay, no. good. He's uh, like uh, Craig Carton over here. He, <laughs> is that what he did a lot? Oh, yes. Yeah? Watch your money. <laughs> All right. Uh, Just kidding. Serious football? We're, we're running out of questions yeah, here. Let's so go through some of the real football, yeah, real football yeah. questions here. Okay. Uh, J.I.A. Meeks from Monday's Mailbag episode. I'm a huge Packers fan and share your guy's man crush with Aaron Rodgers. But do you think there's any area that he can improve on? From a skills or psychological perspective, Ooh. anything with Aaron Rodgers that he could improve on, or is he truly the most perfect? No, gifted there's quarterback. One thing, perfect. There's one thing I'll say, like, uh, mm, there. I, I mean, relatability. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely been the leadership things yeah, there, there that are, doesn't sound like it's always perfect. I don't yeah, think. It's I don't. A, I don't think that Greg Jennings is the model guy, and I. I think that. I think there's. Like, for he, him, he played with Brett Favre, and I think it's hard to go from Brett Favre to anybody. But there are a lot of guys that, that comment on Aaron Rodgers' personality and yeah. stuff like that. And Being I too sensitive, things like that. And maybe he's just an interesting guy. I'm not going to say he's perfect. Nobody's perfect. No. But that seems to be, uh, I don't know, an issue that some people have with him. I think so, too. And, and I, I'll say this. This is just from the playing aspect. Yeah, playing perspective. Playing aspect. Because I, my first thought went to what you said. Uh, the playing aspect, if we were going to get really nitpicky, again, this is the guy that I think is the best quarterback that ever played the sport. But he's been so jaded with people not being open and uh, not have, being able to throw the football on time. 
that there are points here and there where you go, oh, man, if he just took the five step and threw it to that guy, he was open right there, right? But he's had so many other instances where he does that and the guy's not there that he goes, well, damn, I'll just kind of manipulate the defense with my eyes and just wait a little bit longer until I feel a little bit more yeah. comfortable with the next guy I see open. It's not that different than his personality right. and what's going on in his You're personal right. life. You're right. I feel like Aaron has been at a point where he's – he doesn't trust a lot of people. This is from the outside looking in and all that stuff. I've honestly never even met the guy. Uh, except we that never one met time him? at that wedding. What? Where? At Randall Cobb's wedding. I saw him at like a... Oh, he, pre, I didn't actually. We saw him. He didn't yeah. say hi to him. We just no, saw I didn't. Him. Remember? Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay. so I was scared. Um, but I, I look at Aaron and I think, oh, I'm going to be a top pick. I don't go until 24 and it's on national TV. Everything that's going on with his family. Wide receivers have come out and said things afterwards. I think Aaron is at a point where I think jaded is really the word, where I think that a lot of people have let him down and I don't think he knows who to trust. And eventually that callous builds up and that when you can trust people, you don't. Yeah. And I think that's sort of the, the, the side of Aaron that – uh, it's the chip on his shoulder that has maybe gotten a little bit too big. Uh, and that's like I, this would happen a lot of times where he would not have an open receiver and Sims would go. It's because the last 20 times that run that route, he hasn't gotten open on the slant. Right. So it's hard. It's hard that yeah, way. I don't know if Aaron's that think, patient, you know, it's all, right. all it's hard. It's 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 he's we're just saying that would be the one flaw I would recognize. He's pretty damn close to perfect. It's it's hard to play the position the way he's been asked to play. I got another football question to ask you guys here from Sean O'Shea at Sean Likes Bacon. We've seen teams fall off a cliff when their rookie deal quarterback gets the big money second contract, Seattle Colts and Ravens, for example. What can teams like the Rams and Eagles do to safeguard themselves from that drop off? Of the quarterback? Of the of just the team dropping off after the quarterback gets their big money contract. Still built through the draft. Still have to continue to attack the draft to get young talent. And you have to be willing to cut the cord. Yes. Right. You have to be Bill Belichick, lawyer Malloy. So two things here. One, talking about Cam Chancellor right. made me realize how many of those guys they got off the scrap heap. Yeah. Like you get sure Earl Thomas, 14th pick overall, whatever he was in the teens. Cam Chancellor, fifth. Richard Sherman, fifth. Yeah. Michael Bennett off the scrap heap of Tampa Bay. Right. You know, Bobby Wagner, I don't I think it was like a second round pick. They really were able to build all and that and then they just haven't hit in the last few years. And then what was the second thing you said? The second there? thing is cut the cord. when to cut the cord. I read an article about the guy that created spot track. The uh, contract website, the contract website, Buffalo yeah. guy. Yeah. And he's just some guy that was a side hustle. And they were talking about the way uh, contracts are in the NFL. And he goes, the Patriots are perfect. Yeah. He, he said, when you look at the buildup of their contracts, they're all paying guys at every position in the top 15, but they're not paying anybody in the top five. Right. He goes, so you pay everybody really well, but you don't pay anyone over the top. Right. I look at the Sixers to go cross sport. They got Joel Embiid for $25 million a year. Right now, looks like a bargain. Yeah. You have to sign the guys a little early. Like, you got to get a little Russell Wilson $20 or million. Like, dollars. they did a Gronk. Where I, that's why we're complaining about Gronk right now. Gronk's not getting paid. Right. You need to either pay a guy early mm -hmm. and try and lock him in and trust your analysis, or. You kind of got to find— Or you, you got to go, man, Jamie Collins is going to ask for too much, yes. and I don't want to pay him that kind of money. We got to move him. on and trade him or yeah. whatever. And it's it's, it, But the value you get back needs to be good, too. Yeah. Is there anything to— so Bill Walsh, Bill Belichick, they all refuse to pay those guys when it, when it didn't add up. Yeah. Is there anything to getting out ahead of it with your quarterback and doing it like the Patriots do with Brady, where they pay him a little less, but he's incentivized? Like, should, Could the Rams and the Eagles be convincing Carson Wentz or Jared Goff laying the groundwork for that right now? Uh, yes, they can be. I mean, you just you it's hope so with hard. quarterbacks like that, you, you really— I, I, I'm, And again, I think I would be a quarterback like this, like where— I wouldn't be worried about being the highest paid guy. I don't know. So, no, there, there's something to that as far as I think Lefko's got it right. You get out in front of certain contracts. That's thing. One. Quarterback is a tough one. It's tough altogether. You hope through a McVeigh or a Doug Peterson that they can con continue to convey through their quarterback meetings how great it is. We have the team and we have this spending to hope that once when it comes time, he'll realize, like, oh, yeah. damn, I can't take away from all these other things we had. I'll try to be somewhat realistic with what I ask. Yeah, you try and lock them up early. And then I guess, you know, for, for quarterbacks, yeah, you just. 
there's always these rushes where everyone outdoes each other, but other positions, um, you just got to be smart, mm-hmm. you know. But it's tough. Like the, for the for the Rams and the Eagles, they share one thing in common. They have a defensive lineman that's going to warrant a lot of money over the next few years, too. They have a quarterback on their defense, Aaron Donald and Fletcher Cox. Aaron Donald's going to make this really interesting. Fletcher Cox number was big. Yeah. Wasn't insane. No. But Aaron Donald's going to want an insane number. And he's going to deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, they're going to have all that money in Aaron Donald, Todd Gurley, and Jared Goff. You know, all that Brandon Cooks contract, he ain't getting a big deal. That's why they went for Brandon Cooks mm-hmm. over Sammy Watkins. Sure. Marcus Peters, I don't know what's going to happen in a few years with that. No, Marcus Peters going to a lot of money. They're, they're not going to evaluate pay him. it, right? A keep to leave. He's going to be gone. Yeah. And Dominican Sue, he's going to be gone. That Rams team is built to win the Super Bowl in the next two to three years. And if they don't, I think the Rams evaporate quick. I think the, the, the biggest thing, uh, let's end this drafting. conversation, is, yeah, is, is, is like what, what we saw with the Seattle Seahawks. You know, and you're running an organization. Your loyalty has to be to the emblem and the organization. It can't that's be to the, the players. That's the question for the Seahawks. You know, that's hard. If, if you were going to not pay somebody, right? Who would? Who should they well, not have I think, paid? I think. Oh, yeah. It hmm. was Bennett, Chancellor, Thomas, Wagner. Who do you not pay? Yeah, I know. I know that would have been tough. And then they just missed on every offensive lineman they drafted. Missed on offensive linemen, certainly. That, you know, I don't know if they had to give all the money they gave to all those guys. But, they, listen, they were in a tough situation. There's no doubt about that. But my big thing is, I think, not about what they paid them. It's just that they held on to everybody mm. a year or two too long. I yes. think that's where I look at it. All right. Two more questions, then we're done here. Uh, one more football question. At the Infinite Pet what quarterback wide receiver uh, quarterback wide receiver combo from a past era do you think would have the most success in today's NFL? Mm. A quarterback wide receiver duo from a past think, era. Oh, I was thinking like a Steve Young Jerry Rice type of thing. It'd still be awesome because Steve mean, is more mobile. Yeah, I mean Steve would be probably more dangerous this day in the age of the NFL than he would have been back then. So that's a good one. Any that jump think, into your mind? Well, yeah, I feel like we've said this guy's name like seven times Terry today because my father, father, yeah, but like Swan and Bradshaw, I think that would have been pretty special. Swan was a could-do-everything type of receiver. He could have been that guy that's a deep threat, back shoulder guy. What about Aikman and Irvin? Yeah. I don't know if it's uh, like to me. It's not far enough out of the loop to go that be groundbreaking this day and age. I feel like right. we have that kind of combo. I'm trying to think. Johnny if Unitas and Raymond Barry. I mean, oof, Raymond Barry or that damn tight end they have. That's one that's like that was legit. Uh, Mac uh, Mackey. Um, yeah, um, John Mackey. John Mackey with Unitas. What was the original question there though? Quarterback Kenny wide receiver Stabler combo. And Cliff Branch. That's the one. I mean, Cliff Branch is was like the Tyree kill. Really? Of football at that point. He is one where I look at and just go, mm, that could have been a special Branch combo. Branch caught more than 500 passes for just under 9,000 yards and 67 touchdowns, 17.3 yards per catch. See, that's insane. So that would be one I would look at right there, whether it's Stabler and Branch, Plunkett and Branch. Bradshaw and Swan. Bradshaw and Swan. You know, hey, Staubach and Drew Pearson would be pretty damn good, too. Sure. Yeah. All right. All right. Any Brett others? Favre and Sterling Sharp. Oh, man. That's one that— I never really got to appreciate Sterling yeah, Sharp. Yeah, nobody did. He was just becoming the best receiver in football when it happened. That stinks. I'm so, more of a Babe Perilli, Gino uh, Capaletti guy. Surprising <laughs> that you said uh, Phil Simms and— um, Phil what McConkey? Was what was that receiver's name? <laughs> Lionel Manuel. You said there was two questions left. I know. I have one more right here. Oh. So, What's that receiver's name? See, that's the problem about Phil Simms. I know. I was joking. Phil Simms. All right, so the last question here, this is a question for you two, but we're also going to put this out to the listeners and the commenters, too. so many hamburgers too. and hot dogs on July 4th. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so Rod Simba, our uh, senior music producer for what the up, podcast. Rod? What do we, this is a question for the commenters and listeners, what do we call ourselves as a collective fan base? I suggest Podheads. Any of you Ooh, guys have anything else? Heads. So in the comments section, we had two other uh, suggestions. East Elliott Mate said, Mother Hen's Little Chicks. <laughs> And never, never. <laughs> the incredible Mulk fourteen said, "Sims and the Left Hose." Was, <laughs> was his suggestion. I like that actually. Podheads, Podheads is pretty good. I don't know if we're gonna beat that. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts off the top of your heads. But do we want to just kind of use this as a launching pad? Yeah, yes. we'll put it out there and that we'll see what people in the say. Instagram comments. Way to go, Rodson. But though I do like Podheads, that's a good one to start with. Let's Podheads is the leader in the clubhouse right now. I refuse to be anything under the realm of you, Mother, Mother Hens, Hens, little oh chicks. You don't like that one? I'm no. going to get that on a T-shirt and walk around with that. <laughs> chicka, 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 yeah, you need a mother you 
other hand, the uh, sound effect over I there. I did. I just didn't put it on. Oh, okay. All right. That's all I got, Lefko. It's all over. Right. Hey, Quentin. What's up, man? Uh, all right. So I do like the pod heads. And then what was the other one? The Sims left and the left hose. Can't we do can't that. do that. No. No. We can't do that. No, that's that's not good. That's not proper for these times. All right. That felt good. I love the fan question. I do too. Yeah, you we guys can, ask we can make this a questions. staple. You guys ask questions, and you guys also self scout us to the point that I really, really appreciate. Yeah, honestly, it. I don't know about you guys. I didn't have to answer any self scouting questions. I enjoy the self scouting because yeah. I like to know that people are are paying attention and calling us the on our self scouting about me being the party boy and all that. That was a great question. Yeah. Was there any other self scouting that we didn't get to? Uh, no, that was it. I would say there is more. No, there was that was it. The thing that I appreciate about self scouting, and I kind of want to end it here, is. I I think that what we're trying to do with Sims and Lefko is very simple. I don't think there is there are people that are talking about the NFL that are either going to be completely truthful to you or will admit that they don't know everything. I know that Sims watches more film than anybody. Why? Because it's physically impossible to watch more film than Sims because he watches every game. I also think that every time that I watch people talk about football, they act like they know everything. And I love admitting that we don't know everything. Right. And I, I also think that I look around the landscape, everyone on the NFL Network, every show, is not going to be 100% honest because they can't. They're not going to talk about Jameis Winston the way they should. They're not going to talk about marijuana and CBD in the NFL. They're not going to be honest about all these players because they're afraid what's going to happen. And I think we're in a cool spot. And I think that the thing that makes me know that it's cool is when we get DMs or messages or posts sent to us, and then us three, me, Josh, Sims, all text each other and go, holy crap. Like when Mbappe had a run and we were getting messages that were the same messages that we're texting each other, we're building a community and I'm super excited about it. And it's a lot of fun and we appreciate you guys so much because that's what makes it special. So thank you guys. Cue the music. Whoa. Fendrick, <laughs> thank you for rounding up all those Anytime. questions and doing all that work. Way to go, Fendi. Uh, four Sims. Peace out, homies. Four Fendrick. Good evening, Good evening everybody. Good everybody. evening. And for the LEFKOE, man. We appreciate y'all. Sims and Lefko, if you give a fuck about the NFL, then you need to be listening to us. We are the Players Podcast, and sometimes we curse too much. Have a great weekend. Hit us up in the DMs at Sims and Lefko. Josh or I will respond. Sims doesn't understand what DMs are. We should well, get Sims on the DMs one day. Ooh, just let him go wild. Just do like a Reddit, ask me anything. Could do that. Yeah, yeah. we could do that. Yeah, we could. All right, guys. Peace out. Enjoy your weekend. Be well. Talk to you soon. <laughs>